Welcome back to another What the Hell comic book review. We got a nice little stack of comics today. Starting out with a big nun. A big nun lives in a world of dark gothic landscapes where the sky is black with smoke and the rivers run slick with oil. A world inhabited by strangely surreal clockwork creatures, all governed by eccentric politicians, and egomaniacal clockwork masters. The big nun, the big nun, is looking to change all of that. A big nun is looking to escape. Where do you hide when the world is against you? A big nun's search for a ray of hope will lead her to the darkest regions of humanity, past the edge of her soul and into the embrace of her destiny. Can a big nun find a new life outside the acrid walls of darkness that binds her soul? Join the breakthrough writer Che Gilson as she twists a wicked tale of desire, hatred, and love. Likewise, fall into the seductive visuals of Jimmy Robinson's artwork, where complexity lives in the, in the simplicity. Together they bring you into Avagon's world, not by coaxing and nudging, but through vivid dreams and swirling shadows luring you into a world of deep mystery, soaring with imagination. <clears throat> this is interesting. Weird. <laughs> it's black and white artwork. And you just basically go through the character's life and a day in the life of this character and see what it's, what she has to deal with. And it's definitely for the people that like the unique, the wonderful, the strange. Definitely worth checking out. And this is, I didn't know. Yeah, this is done by Image Comics. So. Check that one out. Next up, we have Defective Comics. Yeah, Justice League, or Just Nuts League parody. And it's a flip comic. You got a Spastic Four parody on the other side. And it's basically what you expect. You're getting your... You're getting quite a few fun parody stories throughout here. Like, this is a Ren and Stimpy parody that they got going on here. Red and Stumpy. <laughs> they had a bunch of information on other relatable books that you can find and check out. And then you flip it over and get more stories in the back backside so yeah this is these are nice you get a good variety of stinko versus green gang green lantern <laughs> a little starro and green lantern parody uh but yeah you get a nice variety of stories in here definitely worth the few dollars that you, i mean back in the day these were 295 retail and it's just get yeah, hours of fun in here, and lots of parodies on all your favorite characters from the from the DC and Marvel universes. And I just realized right now, I did not notice this when I got it, but I had Mark Bogger signed and numbered this little yo thing on there. But yeah, that's cool. It's always nice to have those little signatures if you come across them, especially for a regular, regular price bargain bin comic. Then we got Demented Scorpion Child from DMF Comics. Again, we got a flip cover. It's like the story is confusing enough, and then they got just do these flips on me. Uh, I don't think this one is a double sided story, though. No, 
They got some artwork in the back, but yeah. It's number one of five. You get to see this character trying to help out the cops. Well, the cops are dealing with stuff, trying to get this prisoner put in. Kind of has a Joker feel to him. And he's got this very interesting alien. And there's a variety of interesting characters in this storyline, but the one, I don't know if you could call him a sidekick or whatever, but this little character here, he cracked me up. It's this walking head. But this, is, this is a fun look at kind of a story about the strange characters, the evil characters, and kind of a Lobo type character coming after them. But yeah, that's. This is an enjoyable read. Then we got Demon Dreams of Dr. Drew. Not, not Dr. Drew Finchie. But this is from Horror House Publications. Okay. You got three different stories. The Devil's Violin. Sabrina the Sorceress, and the strange case of the absent, absent floor. And it looks like these stories are from Rangers comics back in 1949 and 1950. So it kind of got that EC comics feel. Yeah, Purple Claw. And back there. Yeah, you get all that EC Comics advertising feel, the old horror storylines, nice little short stories, all black and white, lots of good reading material, interesting twist to the little stories that they talk about. Then we got Pinhead versus Martial Law. Law in Hell. And this gives you our martial law character, which I believe is from the Savage Dragon universe. And he's dealing with Pinhead and all the Cenobites. This is done by Pat Mills, writer. Kevin O'Neill did pencil and ink. Steve Busoletto is the colorist. Janice Chang, letter. But yeah. Fun artwork. All kinds of action and things going on. Get little parodies on some of our characters from our other comic lines. This is Done by Epic Comics. <clears throat> the two part special. Of course, we got part one and two. Here's a good shot of Pinhead and Martial Law facing off. But yeah, this is done well. Welcome to the Symphony of Suffering. And just seeing the whole Cenobite storyline mixed in with the martial laws world, it, it was fun. It was a nice little twist on the whole Hellraiser universe. Mixing it in with that. Uh, we got the giant cockju from Image Comics. As you can see on the back picture. The giant image thing covering up a certain member of the theme. <laughs> this is what it says. Basically what you're getting on the cover. Uh, yeah, giant kaiju character that's got a raging erection that's attacking a city. 
ends up having a spout of diarrhea <laughs> during the storyline. Basically, you're seeing the aftermath of a kaiju attacking a city with the things that you may have questions about. It's like, well, what happens if he's got to take a shit? What if he <laughs> has to do something with an erection or something like that? Or what happens out of the norm when a kaiju attacks a city? I mean, even in the ocean itself, I mean, you can imagine the devastation of defecation that can happen with a being that's that big. But, yeah, that was a very interesting, I believe it was a one-shot. It's number one, but I'm pretty sure it was just a one-shot. I don't think they said anything about coming back. Talked about some other stories they thought were done that are coming back, but yeah, I'm sure they'll do more of these. But I believe that was just a one shot at the time. And then the last time we get last time, last one we got here is <clears throat> Here Lies Mark Norman, born in 1953, died 1983. Even in the heart of darkness, there shall come a dawn. Twilight Dawn. Twilight Dawn from Uncommon Works. This is a vampire story. Ed Northcock, Rob Perry, Ronald Hope, Scott Chandler were pretty much part of this one. You get a Twilight Dawn story, a Xanax story, a Sword and the Scepter, preview, a side swipe preview, and a La Roche preview in this issue. That's why I was so confused. It's like so many different storylines in here and things going on, but yeah, you got an interesting vampire story. Actually, I don't know if I'm showing anything too dirty here, but yeah, it's got it's kind of a triple X style storyline, but interesting. The previews were interesting. Here's a couple pictures of the Xanax and the I'm not sure what the other picture preview was, but there's some of the other characters you're going to see along this issue. But yeah, it kind of like was a preview book altogether. I don't know if this was a one shot. I don't see a number on it. So it's and it is volume one, number one, from 1993, but this very much could have just been a one-shot itself, but I'm sure the main stories go on longer, and then the previews were just a little tester for you, but yeah, black and white, interesting, but, but yeah, that's what we had today, so check those out. See if you can find anything that catches your eye, your ear, your little devil tongue, and pick one up for yourself. And we'll get back with more reviews sometime in the future. Keep following under the call of MS. Rate, review, tell a friend, and we'll get back to you soon. Bye.